United States has said that it is deploying additional forces to Germany to bolster the NATO's military presence. We will fight, we will kill as many of them as we can till we have last bullet. Until the very last moment, I didn't believe it would happen. But I didn't ever think it would involve Kiev. The alert from DHS cybersecurity shields up. Every organization in the United States is at risk from cyber threat. If any nation dared to try to stop him from invading Ukraine, they would be met with the threat of nuclear war. If Ukraine falls, there will be no European security. All right, guys, so I struggled to get to bed last night uh, watching these reports coming out of Ukraine and hearing about troop deployments from the United States, Britain, France, and other NATO countries. It got me thinking about how the Ukrainian people were told right up until the last minute, basically right before the invasion, that everything was going to be all right, that there was going to be no invasion, that they didn't have anything to worry about, and that even if the Russians did invade, there would be no problems that Kiev was insurmountable. And of course, we know how that is playing out right now. It's clear that these things were told to the Ukrainian people just to minimize panic. And you have to ask yourself, if that strategy was employed in Ukraine, would it be employed in other countries when this inevitably does spill beyond Ukraine's borders? Are we gonna be told the complete and total truth about what is actually going on? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. And we really have to look at what is happening kinetically on the ground. We're seeing troop deployments from all NATO nations to the surrounding Baltic countries that surround Russia and Belarus and the Ukraine. And we're seeing more aggressive posturing by NATO leaders, including Boris Johnson, who is notably aggressive recently towards Putin. We're seeing a Putin even becoming a bit emotional which is rare because Putin is usually quite measured, calm and collected. That's concerning for me because I do feel that if Russia is pushed or feels like they're being pushed into a corner, they of course have that wild card, nuclear weapons, tactical nuclear weapons. We're hearing this talk about the potential risk of a cyber attack on the US uh, by Russia. And we need to remember that sanctions are essentially an act of war. When you sanction a country, when you try to kill a country by attrition, it's war. We know that based on the current numbers in Europe and through numerous war game exercises, that currently, at least, NATO loses to Russia in Europe. If everything is as it is now, they're overwhelmed by Russian military. So let's just talk about some of the specific troop movements that are happening right now. So. Off the coast of Syria, there is a buildup of the Russian Navy for some reason. Now, there's a concentration of essentially the entire Russian Navy in the Mediterranean in one place. Now, ordinarily, these vessels would be operating in distinct groups. We also know that Iran, Russia and China are going to be holding a third joint naval drill in the northern Indian Ocean amid speculation that the three countries are teaming up in the face of regional tensions with the United States. Taiwan's defense ministry on Thursday said that nine Chinese aircraft had entered its defense identification zone just hours after Russia had launched an invasion into Ukraine. Now, this is nothing out of the ordinary. These incursions into Taiwanese airspace are quite common. The Chinese do it frequently in order to wear out uh, the Taiwanese Air Force. But eventually, of course, the invasion is going to come, as we all know. So we know that France is accelerating their troop deployments to Romania. We have another 3,400 Canadian troops placed on standby to deploy to Europe if necessary. We also have the Iranians issuing their support for the Russian invasion. We have the Israeli government, of course, condemning the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We also have the Syrian president praising Russia's military invasion. And then we have Donald Trump confidently stating that China is going to be next and that they absolutely would be going after Taiwan. Now, I want to clarify some remarks I made about the Chernobyl nuclear plant yesterday. The situation there is such that 
They need to maintain the spent fuel rods from these reactors. Just like the Fukushima situation, if they are not maintained, it could cause a ionizing radioactive disaster across Europe. So that's why the Russians are taking hostages in Chernobyl, because they need people to maintain those nuclear power plants. So I, I said yesterday that it wasn't a big deal, that they weren't too concerned about the area. But the fact of the matter is, is they need to effectively maintain control of that power plant to avoid an even greater catastrophe. My gut is telling me that this, this has the potential to escalate. I think we're just a few steps away from a greater war in Europe. One of the biggest concerns for me is that if Russia did ever feel that they were losing, they might deploy some sort of tactical nuclear weapons. If that were to happen, of course, NATO would be forced to respond in kind. If the situation is getting hot, you'll be told it's cold. If things are getting bad, you're going to be told that nothing is wrong, that you should keep calm and that you shouldn't panic. But what I'm telling you to do right now is get the jump on things. Make sure you're squared away just in case. I'm not saying you need to go and drop everything in your bank account right now on prepping supplies. But I would encourage you to top off your preps, okay? Maybe put a bit more food away when you go grocery shopping. Go pick up some extra ammo from the gun store because you just never know. And because Russia is one of the main exporters of surplus ammunition, you know, the price of ammo is going to go up a lot and other prepping supplies in general. The best case scenario with all of this is that we're gonna see severe financial hardship. And uh, Russian bear, company sent me a message saying, Dear Nate, we are glad to hear that you're expressing your concern about the political situation around our country. Unfortunately, the political situation will affect our business. We are subject to direct sanctions due to the fact that we have Russian goods that we sell to the United States. It's too, still too early to talk about all the consequences, but if the situation does not change, then there is a high probability that Russia will be disconnected from the SWIFT banking system, and then we will not be able to receive payment for the goods. And the worst thing is we will not even be able to refund the amounts that we have already paid to get our order, which we're not going to get anymore. This means that they basically have to cancel our order. So for anybody who has a Russian bear tent on back order, we're going to have to issue a refund because there's no guarantees right now. So I apologize, but this is just one of the effects. And we do know that Mountain House is going to be raising their prices on their freeze dried food again by a substantial amount. The time is now to get ahead of the panic because I could very well see a situation where we are brought in to a broader war and we get on this war footing and then we have some of our rights and freedoms restricted as a result of that. There is a potential uh, for cyber attack. There is a potential that we start seeing various attacks even on our own infrastructure. Were that to happen, that might be licensed for the government to crack down on us and you know restrict more of our rights and freedoms and perhaps the whole evocation of the emergency measures act perhaps that was just a primer for that anyways guys get prepared because this situation could escalate quickly and we'll be the last to know thanks for watching canadian prepper out the best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.